during our day to day, -to -day life. Uh, but like we all aware that uh, in the last 20, 25 years, what has happened is that we are more uh, inclined towards internet and uh, the internet per se is uh, itself uh, uh, a borderless um, system which is there. So there's uh, boundaries defined internet. So the cyberspace, it's, it's so blurry. <clears throat> so there's no distinction between countries. There's no distinction between uh, any point of earth uh, where we are trying to communicate. So uh, you know, having said so, uh, cyber, cyber citizenship becomes so important to understand uh, because we never been taught about these subjects in the books. We have never been uh, told about this particular topic uh, in our uh, curriculum. Uh, while we've been talk, uh, told about our fundamental rights, our other rights which are there, you know, uh, what we need to do, how we need to behave, but then uh, where is that book or where is, you know, template where we need to follow when we are on the internet. So practically when we came onto the internet, we came on our own and, you know, uh, we, are, we are defining our own rules. So, uh, but every is whether it's a uh, internet or uh, otherwise or the physical life uh, there are certain set rules which are there so this is what is the background what i'm going to be talking about uh, while uh, we, are, we are all uh, locked down because of the covid and i understand that, you know we are uh, against the time against uh, a testing time of uh, the uh, life uh, where we are working from home and here we are required to know about the cyber citizenship. We as a parents, we as a, you know, our, uh, uh, the father or mother of kids, we need to know. Also the kids need to know about it, right? So uh, it's it's all who have to know about it as to what cyber citizenship entails, what we need to do, what are the, the, uh, the benefits of knowing it, and how we can bring our kids in the space, you know, uh, very effectively. And to tell you a perspective, you know, uh, we all as uh, parents uh, so have been brought up with uh, a newspaper in the hand in the morning and we are always waiting for a newspaper, right? And uh, we read through the newspaper, we had a kind of a set routine which was there. Whereas, now you see the kids, how many kids really grab up to that newspaper to read? Rather, they will grab a mobile phone see to see what messages were there all night when they were sleeping okay and that's the mobile world that's the change what we are seeing today okay so having uh, said so you know as, as a background so just to give you a screen challenge and just think of it as to how much time do you really spend daily now on a screen right uh, keep your hands on your heart and really tell as to how much you do and you yourself will say that, you know, it's much more than I should have been doing it. And for that matter, uh, your teenager kids, your small kids, how much time are they spending? You know, I have seen moms, you know, just giving a mobile phone in a toddler's hand and saying, you know, if he, he or she is trying for anything, just, just take this phone. You know, play up down with it. Okay. So, this is where we have to understand that how much time as a parent, as a kids, we should be spending time on a screen time, right? So uh, I just uh, distinguish uh, two different categories of uh, entity, uh, entities. One, other digital natives, and the digital natives are the one who are the integral part of the, you know, of the internet, right? And they're seeing technology on the day when, uh, when they were born, right? And uh, uh, then is a, is a category of people, that's us, who are the digital immigrants, who were born in the pre-digital era, and they have adopted use of technology, and we are using all those devices, right? To put it across, we are all sequential thinking, we are textual in nature, we were limited resources, you all know it, we were single task at the time, we didn't have those libraries which are there uh, all across. So where are the digital natives? They are multi-resources, they are multi-media, they are parallel thinking, multi-task. So, 
So those are the major difference when we look in for a citizen who are the digital natives who are born in it, who are, you know, the one who are us, who have come as part of this technology, right? But uh, uh, the best part is uh, natives and the immigrants, you know, we are massively using social networks and social media, right? Almost same amount, and, and the kids are, in fact, generating more amount of data. And, and practically, the amount of data which has been created today, you know, it's in zettabytes and petabytes, you know, um, and it's kind of a collective storytelling. And we are on all social medias together, right? So that's what we are exploiting the social media. But to tell you who are the digital natives, these are the kids who are born, born after 1990s. They are highly connected. And you'll be surprised to hear that there are almost seven screens which they see when they're in the age of five. They they do video games. Uh, they they have the handheld de devices. They use instant messaging. They use social networking sites. They easily adapt and adopt to any technology. Right? Uh, you may fumble with a mobile phone, but you give them, and after you know, I'll tell you the features which you have never exposed. You know, while you are having that mobile phone in your hand, and they generate the content. The amount of content which is being generated, whether it's your Instagram, your Snapchat, your, your uh, other uh, media's which are concerned. And to give you some of the figures, right? So the kids today have almost seventy-eight percent of teens have cell phones, and uh, most of them are the smartphones what they're holding, and uh, most of them have the internet. Connectivity with them. 23% of kids have tablets along with mobile phones, and 81% are using social media networking sites. So that's so huge, just imagine. Okay. And at an average, the amount of time what they're devoting is seven hours and 38 minutes per day for the entertainment. Typical day. Just see the time they're using here. And uh, the students per se, then they are into uh, access to the laptops and stuff. And uh, the videos which are there, so it talks of Instagram, uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, you know, uh, Snapchat which is most common. And I'll discuss the Snapchat part of it uh, because uh, everybody says that uh, the moment you see uh, any, uh, you know, photograph, that vanishes. Okay, but really that data never goes off. That data is always there, present in some server or the other. Same is the case where the uh, where the uh, yesterday uh, there were um, you know uh, Twitter messages which were coming up, where the Facebook has been storing all your archival data from the day when you joined it, and you'll be surprised to see the amount of data which they have collected about you. Your clicks, your likes, your contacts, your numbers, your apps which you are using. Okay. And so, much, so forth that it's mind boggling. If you see through the data, you'll stop using Facebook. Right. And it's all there. Believe you me. That is, uh, uh, you know, the Spotify, Netflix, and other platform what we are trying to use. Right. So, what's happened today is that. Internet has become an indispensable tool for every one of us, right? But it's at the same time, we need to dust off the concept of the citizenship, like I told in my prelude part of it, that we need to understand what this citizenship is all about and how do we apply it to the online world. If you understand that particular aspect of your digital citizenship to your physical digital Physical, uh, physical citizenship, you know, it will make a lot of difference to you. It will give you the insight as to what you need to do when you are, you know. And this is, what is a very common picture which you see, maybe your kids, maybe your nephews, niece, everyone. Raising up a kid is a challenge today. We just give him a laptop or, or, or an iPad or a mobile phone. But how many of us ever told them 
what to do and what not to do. What to what not to do. Which sites are good, which sites are not good. Right? I think seldom anybody has actually gone into those details to you know tell that this is good and bad. These are the rules of the citizenship of you know online uh, uh, network. So becoming a real challenge today of raising a citizen, right? And this is again a very common. Do you know what the people are doing online? Do you ever monitor them? The answer is a big no. And this is where we are falling prey to a lot of other things which are there on the internet, on the social networks. Right? All are aware, you know, of the game which was the blue whale where kids ended up doing a suicide. It's because we practically never told them the rules. The rules of the social... I'll request to mute yourself, Rajan. So we never told them the rules of the game. And that's where, you know, we have to guide them. So speakers which are there, uh, uh, Manilias we are who are there, you know, there are 90.4 percent of Manilias who are using the social media network. Gen X, that's 77.5 percent. Boomers, right? The toddlers, they're all there. 48.2 percent. Just imagine this number is increasing only. Rajan, please, I request you to mute yourself. So uh, uh, it's like. Uh, and of everybody across the board is using the social media, right? And it's growing that they're all generators of data. They're all, you know, creating data, right? And how effectively or ineffectively the data is used, we'll just discuss that, right? And when you come to the kids, you know, there's a, now here's a dichotomy between the kids and the parents, uh, because, the kids, for them, it's the independence, which is part of the growing up. Yeah. So uh, you cannot deny it. At the same time, you cannot leave them unsupervised, hanging out with friends. They has to have some supervision. Like in, in the case of a normal life, doesn't your parent tell you that this is the cut of time when you have to be back home? Okay. This the the places where you can go. These are the places which you cannot go. These are the kind of friends which you should make. These are the areas which are good to you. Practically, when it comes to the cyber world, I think we are missing out on this particular aspect. Because nobody tells us that which are the good sites to go. Where do we need to go? How we need to go? How are we going to be in the virtual world when we're unmonitored? Right? That's where the things are going wrong. Okay. To tell you a fact, today, twice a year of the India's population is on the watching pornography every hour, every minute. I'm not saying that this is wrong or right, but the kind of data usage which is happening, we never told anyone the rules of the game, all about the cyber world. Okay? I would suggest always, whenever you are, as a parent, you know, First, you follow the rules of how much is the age parameters for each site, because every site has got age restriction, whether it's 12 years or 18 years. But we always, the kids do fake up their, you know, take their age to, you know, create accounts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, right? So it's, it's always advisable as a parent to create an account on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and supervise the activity on those forums. That's the best way you can teach them, even if you don't know what the rules are, right? And when you talk of a child, when you leave him all alone, that's the character. When you are all alone, what you're doing on the internet, right? And that's where your citizenship comes in. You take it to a normal physical citizenship. If you're left alone, what are you going to do? You're going to go by the copybook style of doing everything right. So here also, when you're in the cyberspace, it defines a character, right? 
when nobody is watching you. So some bit of rules for the cyberspace, which uh, I thought I'd like to bring it out. Right. So, uh, so practically, citizenship is a rights, the privileges and the duties, which were conferred on a member of society, and that's what we have been calling it. Okay, and it most often includes both protection, that's the rights and duties. So you have the rights and duties. Similarly, the cyber citizenship is the rights, its privileges and responsibilities are required for the internet and the network users. So if you take out the connotation of your physical citizenship versus the cyber citizenship, you have the rights, you have the privileges, you have the responsibilities which you have in your daily life, in your physical life. So there's nothing different. So only thing is we need to follow those rules, follow those rights. Okay. And the, one of the tools is the social networks. And uh, it, it, the social networks practically is giving you the power to communicate, to collaborate, right? You're, you're able to get in with good friendships. You get to be able to do the, the business. You can get with the fun, right? On the, on the hindsight, it's a tool which is used for scans, for addiction, for identity theft, waste of time and harassment. Right. So it's got uh, two sides of the same coin. And some bit of um, you know, figures uh, to show how the things are in India and which as a parent you should know is that 70% of the online youth in India and more than five hours, and when I told seven hours, 38 minutes, that's pretty huge. Seventy percent have posted their contact details, their emails, their phone numbers, their home address, everything. Fifty-three percent have someone in person they have met first time online, right? And they don't even know. And sixty-three of the percent of the youth do not turn up their GPS, so they give you a location online 24 7 and 60 percent of the parents don't know what their kids view online so these are the kind of problems which i am trying to highlight when we are talking about the cyber citizenship okay and what are the risks children face online primarily what they see what they do and what they talk to. ask your kids these questions you'll get the answer most of the time, you know, they are not aware of it. To give you an example here, you know, there was a case which came up where a child, a girl child who was around maybe 11, 12 years of age, she, she had a Facebook account and she was contacted by someone who told that I'm from your school itself. Okay, and, uh, you know, I want to meet you. I like you. And uh, the girl said, no, I, uh, not, no, no, not, I cannot. And, he kept on pestering her, and uh, thereafter, the girl said, "Yes, we will. Uh, I'll come and meet." She went with the driver, and believe you me, what she saw, you know. And uh, he said, "Okay, I'll be wearing pink shirt or t-shirt, pink pink shirt, t-shirt or something." And what she saw, it was a forty-year-old man in the pink t-shirt who was standing at the place where she was called. So primarily, you have to be very careful as to what they see, what they do, and what they talk to as a parent. You just can't let them let free on the social media, right? So some of the uh, some of the dangers and uh, uh, and risks of social media, the cyber bullying, uh, which is very common, and uh, I'll, I'll be subsequently dwelling, uh, dwelling on it. There's the geolocation inappropriate content which everybody gets through, sexting, online predators, and breaking laws. Okay. So these are the kind of risks which are already there on the social media. And most of us, we all use social media, but we are all trying to be ignorant about all these things. Right. right. So what are the kind of cyber crimes do happen? Either it's a copyright infringement which takes place, whether you're downloading a song which you didn't purchase because today uh, everything is a copyrighted songs, you're profiting from others' creative effort or products, you're bullying or harassing anyone, child pornography, pedophiles, that's really very disturbing which is happening on the internet. 
internet stalking, identity theft, and plagiarism. So these are the crimes which are there, which we have to protect our kids, we have to protect ourselves as well, right? When we are talking as a cyber citizens. Something more, uh, we talk of the digital footprint and um, like we walk on the sand and wherever we are walking, we like to see our imprints on the sand and they are there for a long time. Similarly, when we are walking down the internet, so whatever you are posting today on the social media sites, whatever mails you are writing on social media sites, whatever likes you are doing on the social media sites, they are all there every time. They never go off. The word delete on the social media or on the internet is only that it's being hidden from you. It's not hidden from the database. Okay, so the imprints are always going to be there. And this is what we need to be very careful about. Right. And what's a digital footprint? They're the trails you leave behind, and they're there for a long time, even if you leave them. Okay. So wherever you're posting, so you've got to be very careful about your posting, whatever you're doing on the internet. And what are the digital footprints being created by? Your photos, which you're posting. Even if you delete a photograph, the Snapchat, I give you an example. You know, it's, it's a, everybody was happy about the Snapchat that once you see it, it's getting deleted. But no, that's not the case. Right? YouTube. Sexting, uh, textings which are you're doing, social media accounts, any of the accounts which you're using today, they are the few of the chief. Comments which you're posting on the sites, your emails which you're sending, your photo tagging on other user accounts, the other apps which you're using, right? So those are also leaving uh, kind of uh, the data and the purchases and the transactions. So everything which you're doing today has got a digital footprint. Okay. And what goes online stays online. Remember this, right? Like I told you, Facebook, even if you delete your photographs, they are going to stay there online for three years. And the way I told you the archival data, it's never going to go away. I could download my data from right from 2009 onwards, right? And it gave me every bit of my information, right? And there are archival sites which are there where you can, you know, find all the tweets which you have done. And, you know, there you can retrieve your archival data. Okay. So nothing is going to be like going away. So they're going to be staying online once you're posted. Right. So something uh, is when we talk in the pawns of the, uh, the social media. So be very wary of uh, whenever you put a message, it can become a viral in a matter of minutes. So think before what you're posting. Images and text can remain online indefinitely. Right? And innocent pictures can be photoshopped with sexual pictures, especially the kids, pedophiles. Never post a kid's photograph on social media. Or the pedophiles who are there, the guys who are with the pervert mind, they can take the photograph of the kid and use it somewhere else. Right? So be very careful about it. It's, it's not a uh, kind of a fiction or a, or a story which I'm telling you is a fact. Right? Other problem is your online harassment, which you're there. Okay? And any message which you're writing can be taken out of the context. So, Whatever you're writing, you think twice before putting it out, right? And, you know, we always thought that we are the users of Facebook. We are the users of Snapchat, Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, Instagram, and other uh, social media platforms, all which you're using. But we are wrong. You know why? Because we are no more the customers of it. We are no more the, the users of it. We are the product. We are sellable like your toothpaste, your soap. We are branded with a, a barcode. We, our data is valued and it's being sold to all the ad companies. 
Okay. That's why you find most mm -hmm. of the time, you know, anytime you open up a particular platform and it will ask you, you know, why don't you fill in your education? Why don't you fill in your school? Why don't you fill in, you know, um, the kind of uh, information? And classic, I'll tell you. Very recently, last week, everybody, he said, me to 20, me at 20. And everybody started posting me at 20 photographs from the archival, you know, normal camera photographs, you know, scanned photograph and put it but Do you know what that challenge was all about? To create your profile of facial recognition. And we are like fools who are all falling prey at me at 20. Okay, so be very wary of all these things which are happening. So you are no more custom. You're sold, your data is sold. How good or bad data is, it defines as to how much of input we are giving. And to tell you practically, you know, there's almost 5,000 data points for each, each individual, which can be collected, collated, using AI can be used, maybe on you, or it can be given to ad agencies. The kind of, you know, uh, the videos what you see, the kind of posts was what you see, the kind of friends you, who are being, you know, uh, given to you that uh, these are the likelihood that you may like these friends. So that's so important. So how do you manage your digital footprint? Google yourself, you'll find for yourself that each time your name has come up and do this after a couple of months, you'll find up again what information you're leaving there. You know, set up a Google alert. There's a, there's a tool where you can put your name and whenever your name comes up, it will pop up. And protect your personal data. Don't dis disclose your personal address, your phone numbers, your password, your bank card numbers. Right? And consider using nicknames instead of your name. So that's what you should do to try avoid the digital footprint. Right? Some more is keep login info under lock and key. Never share it. Think before you post, which I've been reiterating again and again. Pause before you post. Think twice, post once. Some bit on the bullying part, and uh, you know, uh, this is one very common topic which everybody's gone through bullying, but most of us don't say that we've been bullied. And this is the old face of bullying, which we were, we were seen at, as kids in, uh, you know, uh, in the colleges or schools, and most of us would have gone through. But to tell you about how the bullying takes place on the, on the net today is very common. Kids are, are uh, uh, you know, facing the bullying that's almost 70% of kids, they face it. And, and to tell you, most of us, or the most of the kids, they never tell that they've been bullied because they don't know how to tell their parents. How will their parents take it? And, you know, that's a problem. And one example which I brought out earlier also was a blue whale where, you know, the child was uh, made to you know, do different stages. And every stage, it said that if you're not doing it, I'll ruin your life. I'll tell your parents, I'll post it online. Right. And this is one example. Even peer groups, right, they do this kind of bullying. So lots of, in colleges and schools, this particular thing happens, that I'm going to ruin you if you don't do this. So that's what we have to be very careful about it, right? And only one in 10 to tell their parents that they mean cyber to me, right? And that's very unfortunate part. Like I told you, the 70% of teens have witnessed this cyber thing, but if you ask them, right, they are, quite wary to put up their hands, right? And the unfortunate part more, that over 20% of cyberbullying victims and 15% of sexting victims have contemplated suicide. That's so unfortunate. And this is what is the cyberspace. This is the cons of the cyberspace. While we use it to the best, but this is all 
the bad part of cyberspace, right? And this is one of the studies by the UNICEF where one in three young people reported being victim online. So uh, th this is where we are. So the only solution is think before you post, right? And think that if you are going to be cyber bullet or you need to overcome. There are some of the tips which I like to you know give it to you uh, in case anybody is cyber bullied. One is tell someone, tell someone, your friend, your parent, your caretaker, your guardian, your teacher, do that. Ignore them if you're being cyber bullied. Don't reply to emails, don't reply to the posts, don't reply to the messages which are coming up. Keep the messages so that you can show it to someone if, if you are cyber bullied. Right, you need to tell someone, you can show that this is what happened, right? Because otherwise nobody will understand your agony or kids agony, right? And you need to change your identity the moment you are, the moment you are being cyber bullied. So those are the kind of things which are there. Then you block the bullies, change your privacy settings okay? and report them. Don't let these guys go let off without you not doing anything, right? So th that's the best way of going about it. In, and, and, and in case you are being cyber bullied, you can go to the cyber crime site and report right, on the internet. Something different is danger of sexting, which is really happening on the internet. And especially during COVID time, it's taking off like anything. And to tell you about the people who are not aware of what sexting is all about, is the act of sending sexual explicit messages and photographs, you know, using your mobile phones, your social medias, right? And doing that particular thing. And it can have a real serious disastrous consequences, right? Even the Indian law, the Indian IT Act law, uh, which is, uh, you know, pretty stringent on the sexting part of it, these kind of uh, illicit photographs, if they are being, you know, sent across, uh, you know, they are also very uh, rigid or very strict on these particular. Okay. And a victim may practically feel humiliated, they feel low esteem in case, you know, they are being put through these kind of problems, and they tend to commit suicide. Uh, you know, uh, because of some of the sex cases, right? And really, you can't do anything, you know, if you are being uh, encountering these kind of situations. And what could a what could a student do in case he or she becomes a victim? And what are the warning signs which are available? Uh, they may not be wanting to get involved in family or school activities or college activities. They'll start exhibiting unusual mood swing. They'll decline in homework and grades. They'll have trouble sleeping. They'll unexpectedly stop or return to use a computer. And suddenly you find that. They'll really sweet, uh, switch streams programs whenever you as a parent who comes close by. And there's an unusual interest in self-harm or suicide. There's a change in appetite. They may discuss revenge. They will show unusual anger, sadness, depression. So these are the telltale signs. And if your child is going to these, or even an adult for that matter, then these are the problems he or she is going through. I think, and uh, we we can we have to really look into it to see this problem. And what? Other things, you know, are you a good cyber citizen? Ask for yourself, right? What you need to do, because knowledge is power, but talk to your children about online safety. You know, you have to know about what cyber citizenship is all about. Agree on the boundaries with kids, because, you know, kids are really reluctant. You tell them, I'm not going to let you watch this particular site, I'm not going to let you watch. Apps are not letting you watch this, you know, games or play games. So agree on the boundaries. You know, if you're agreeing on the boundaries with them, it's a happy situation. 
choose the age appropriate apps on the website so that you know if your kid has to go there, you know what he or she is doing. You know, it will give a, a very soothing feeling to you as well as the kid. Set the privacy settings together, which we are not doing. The moment we, you know, uh, we let a kid with a mobile phone, we never set the privacy setting. Okay, we show them to keep themselves secure. You know, and you have to learn from your kid itself. So that's where we have to keep the kid online, keep him safe, you know, set your parent control. Supervise your younger kids and you know what they're doing and teach them how to behave responsibly online. I have elaborated these particular points, you know, uh, in, in my uh, earlier slides. You know, be a role model model then. Assume that everything what's, what's happening there is permanent. So you need to have a quality time with them and do offline activities as a family. So don't let a kid be just, you know, if he's trying, just give him a mobile phone and he'll be quiet, which, which everybody's doing. And you don't know what, what he's doing all about. And uh, while the colleges and the schools are closed now, and we are all in the self-isolation, the kids are getting more screen time than usual. And do you really know, are there the boundaries? of the rights, the responsibilities, which I told earlier as a cyber citizen. You know, did you ever check that he is interacting the right way, just like physical world? And, uh, you know, you need to show them how safe are on the internet, right? So these are some of the questions which are there. And you have to think safety of your kid, of your family. While you're using the cyberspace, the safety is the first and the foremost. And believe me, the families which go through the trauma of either the cyberbullying or the sex, uh, sexting or the kind of uh, you know, the online predators, which I didn't discuss about, but that's also there, right? So it's a trauma for them. And really, again, think of safety when you are using the internet. You need to tell your family about, you know, uh, what your cyber citizenship rules tell you, what they define to be safe, what they define, how, uh, uh, the, what they define that you are going to be a, a good citizen of the cyberspace. And with this, I've uh, come to the talk and uh, as, as a parting shot, I will just say that be cyber safe as a cyber citizen. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, willing to take uh, any questions if you have. It will be a pleasure to talk to you. You can uh, ask your questions. Uh, Ravi, sir, nice talk, uh, sir. Uh, I'm seeing uh, there are a lot of people who has raised their hands. So I request everyone to unmute yourself uh, and ask a question. Uh, Mr. Anupam Pandey, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Mr. Pandey. Yes. Uh, hello, sir. First of all, thank you for the session. And my question to you is, uh, how can cyber insurance be useful in controlling teenagers doing useless things on Internet? And if it is that much effective, then uh, what might be the strongest reason that the cyber crime is growing in such pace? Um, yeah, Anupam, the, firstly, the cyber insurance is, doesn't cover uh, what the cyber citizens do on the Internet. Uh, cyber citizen insurance is basically about your data, your infrastructure, and other things. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the other aspect of what the kids are doing online, uh, that's a kind of curriculum which we need to include in all the you know, academia. Where we teach students as to how they should behave on the internet. 
that's what is lacking today and uh, that's what we should try and work with. So, yes. But the, uh, but the cyber insurance is a totally a different ballgame uh, when we talk of uh, uh, the kind of the cyber citizen what we are trying to talk. I hope I replied to your question. Thank you, sir. Next, uh, Mr. Uh, PSK. Uh, uh, Mr. PSK don't have a mic, so he has written a question. Uh, he's simply asking uh, while we are uh, discussing about cyber citizenship. And sir, you have already uh, discussed about cyber citizens. So could you please uh, summarize what is exactly cyber citizen is? So primarily, citizens, uh, when, when I spoke about the cyber citizenship, it's uh, kind of the rights, which I like I, to give you again, to tell you again, like in a normal physical world, you're a citizen of India. Okay, you follow rules when you go on the road. You follow rules when you're there, you know, doing anything. You follow the rules of uh, your family. You follow the rules of the country when it is required. Okay, so you have, you have then you have got some fundamental rights which you always fight for. And you ensure that those rights are always there with you. Okay, and you follow those, you know, rules and the rights. Now, similarly in the, uh, in the cyber city, in the cyberspace, what happens is, you know, like I told that uh, the cyberspace is blurry, so there's no boundaries as such. But you definitely should have the rights to yourself as to what I need to do. The rules to being on the cyber or the space. So those rules differ as to what should be done by you, how it should be done by you, and whether it's right or wrong, or whatever it, it is. Right. So the cyber space, also when we say the cyber citizenship, has got the rights, it's got its principles, it's got its responsibilities as a cyber citizen. So you have to follow all, right? And this is a major point of discussion, right? When we talk of the cyberspace. I hope I played your query. Uh, Hello, uh, uh, sir, I have one more question. Uh, Anupam, yeah, this is Anupam Pandey. I have one more yeah. question. Uh, sir, you, you mentioned that parents should keep a check on their children, but uh, what if the parents don't know uh, much about how to use social networking sites, or what if they are working and very busy in other stuffs? Then what can be done in this case, as we can't let their child in his or her mind? Yeah, so I, I think when I told about, uh, you know, what as a parent you should do, uh, you have to sit with your Let's see, it's a, a, we are in a situation that uh, if you say that we don't know and, uh, you know, and we let our child go the way they are doing, that's what they are doing presently. But my, uh, you know, only request to all parents is that uh, we should sit with, with our kids, try and tell them that this is good or bad. Like we give a child a sex education, which, we, which was never been done earlier. Today we talk to the kid and we are very open and very candid when we talk to them. Similarly, the kids today of the cyber. We should not only tell them that this is the good part of it, this is the bad part of it also, right? And and what I listed out the bad parts, some of it are actually the bad parts and they're all there. It's only then uh, that we are closing our eyes for all those. So sit with your kid, you know, what apps he's using, what games he's using, just, you know, you need to understand what games he's using, okay? Uh, uh, what he's trying to, you know, use, uh, use his other time for. What's his sleeping time, okay? Uh, it's not that, you know, uh, you have just let him give him a mobile phone and he does whatever you want. Like you're busy, uh, you can do the parental control. The best part of uh, any mobile phone today, any application, even browsers which are there on the internet. So you have a feature uh, which gives you a parental control. And I think most of us don't exercise that kind of, uh, you know, policies on the, on the browser. So that if a kid... You know, he may learn something from back from the school or college or he will try to emulate the same thing at house. You know, if you have put the parent, parental control in those sites, he sh he'll not be able to get through a particular barrier. And uh, you as a parent, you need to get into it. 
uh, unfortunately in mobile phones we don't have applications so that's part of the security so where you can invoke parental controls on mobiles and uh, uh, where he cannot actually go beyond certain uh, sites or applications which are um, having a, a adult content or which are which are having uh, malicious content so those are uh, the things which will we should be very careful of I hope you I hope you answered your question man. yes sir yeah thank you I guess this session must be open for parents too anyways thank you sir yeah, yeah. so there is a similar question like related to uh, Ms. Anpama asked uh, what are the various ways like parents uh, filter the contents for their children so like I told you on the on the uh, on say for example everybody who's using a uh, laptop or uh, you have a browser that's a chrome browser which everybody using there's a uh, you know settings which is for the parental control and uh, if you set your parental control so it doesn't let you go past some of the sites which are having adult content so that you can always do it that's the easiest to do it and similarly in the mobile phones if you are using chrome you can do the, those settings as well there is one more question from rahul kumar sharma uh, he is uh, keen to know uh, if he stores a media file in the phone are these files uh, secure or unsecure otherwise uh, as we said uh, the online media is not secure means these are unsafe so how how we can you know distinguish both so if it is connected to internet it's not uh, secure i can just tell you anybody can uh, get into your mobile phone uh, mobile phone is just like your laptop or desktop machine where uh, any of uh, the person who can hack into it and take your data away so uh, anything which is there connected to the internet is not secure question from mr PSK, he is asking, is there any guidelines or some kind of, you know, pointers where we can know what information we should not enter online? Like, uh, I know a mobile number should not be entered anywhere. My Aadhaar card number should not be any, anywhere unless I know the site. And right. are there guidelines for this? So, so uh, there, definitely there are do's and don'ts which have been given on uh, Indian cybercrime site. So uh, that I think can be followed, but to give a uh, uh, kind of a huge perspective to it, I think uh, we should start teaching this in part of the academia or uh, institutes where we teach people uh, of goods and bads of the social media and uh, online platforms. Uh, there is one more uh, interesting question. Uh... Uh, this is a very straightforward question. Uh, Mr. Rahul is saying, uh, is, isn't this possible that we can suspend these kind of online platforms or websites who are stealing our data? So it, it's a, uh, just to tell you the fact, the, whenever you were opened a Facebook account, there would be a, you know, a policy and user license, ULA. And at, it's a very, very lengthy writer. When you open an account, you never even look at it. And you say, I accept all. And you give your concurrence to the site, to take your data to be sold. Okay. That's the place where we go wrong, first of all. And all these sites, your Facebook, Twitter, Google, Microsoft, and all, all other platforms who are there. You know, they try to sniff into your data, but uh, at the end of the day, it's we who, who have given the permission. So the only way to get out of it is that either you get out, out of the Facebook, okay, or you put bare minimal data, right? So that's what we should do. And they are taking the of our Hello. weakness altogether to understand all the end user licenses which are so complex in English. Okay. And they are taking and uh, giving it to ad agencies, 
your mobile phones and other uh, you know uh, things to uh, earn money and they all almost billion dollars big big billion dollar companies Uh, one more question uh, as a cyber citizen what are my rights if i met some kind of cyber incident so where can i uh, lodge a complaint about it? so practically uh, if you want to lodge a complaint you, there's a site which i brought up it's a cybercrime.gov.in uh, where you can do it and indian id uh, act which is there with all and uh, under those it act there are provisions that in case there's a criminal uh, and uh, those crimes are being you know kind of uh, validated they will be punished and there are very strict punishments uh, for the cyber law uh, you know the cyber crimes which are there so uh, our related question is uh, while we are talking about uh, our rights as a cyber citizen so what are my responsibility as a cyber citizen but can i should not you know put uh, so i have actually i have brought out in my presentation all the responsibilities of when i spoke about the con the cons of it uh, how you have to really behave on the cyber uh, you know uh, on the cyber space uh, the, those are the rights which uh, the, the responsibilities which uh, we are i were trying to figure it out as to uh, don't post anything which is wrong be as a Uh, as a human when you are posting uh, because the other person who is there on the other side is also human uh, don't copy any data don't uh, you know uh, take the others uh, information and use it for your own most of the the colleges or the students what they do is you know they uh, once they have been told to write a paper or a thesis what they go uh, go to the net uh, get on to some university or a college or a uh, other research site you know copy the thesis Uh, try to do the paraphrasing, change the paraphrase, and you know, uh, make its own. So that's a big case of plagiarism, which happens. So uh, as a good person, all these uh, things should be not done by the students or, uh, as whole. Well. So these are some things which are very important. And and when we talk of being a good citizen in the cyberspace, follow the same rules which you follow in your life. Be a, when you are a good human being, same rules, uh, you know, uh, happen. uh for the cyber space as well uh, we are uh, done with all the questions uh, anyone has yeah. any uh, question please raise your hand or unmute yourself to ask a questions i believe any other question are... please yeah there is one more question uh this is related to a uh, cyber law uh, in india do we have any kind of law to control these online platforms or websites uh, this question is related to some kind of uh, uh, newly investment of facebook in reliance like uh, in past facebook uh, is caught that they are stealing data and sharing data so um, i know uh, this is a very challenging question to answer because uh, Uh, we will not like to get into uh, the nitty gritty of uh, the facebook and plans uh, tie up but uh, definitely i like to say that uh, uh, the sites uh, whatever they are copying the data uh, they have their own rights to do it and unfortunately uh, we we are still waiting in india for the data privacy law which is yet to come in uh, and once the data privacy law comes in uh, the, one of the major uh, you know component of the data privacy law is the data localization and uh, the data localization entails that if it is a facebook then they have to have a copy of the data in india itself okay if it is a google then it, it has to have the copy of your data as it uh, in india itself and they have to define what's a critical data what's a sensitive data and those copies also have to be in india itself so uh, So the the data privacy law is yet to come in. It it, it should have kicked in uh, or it was the as a law uh, by now, but I think it's getting held up. Uh, that is a very a very uh, interesting law. When it comes up, it will be you know putting a lot of things into place. That's one. Secondly, as regards the IT Act is concerned, we have the IT law, which is very stringent again. 
and uh, with, though it came up in year 2000, we are waiting for the next iteration. There was a, there was a changes in 2011 and 13, and then you know we are waiting for the newer law to come in, uh, which is going to take in uh, take in uh, consideration all the major changes which have happened in the last couple of years. Also, we are going to have the cyber security policy at the national level, which is going to come in. So uh, all these rules, regulations coming in place, I think it will change the complete uh, you know ecosystem in India as regards as cyber law is concerned, the rules are concerned, uh, the uh, the data privacy laws are concerned. So the things are going to change uh, quite a bit. Yes, please. Uh, I think uh, we will take a last question of this session. Uh, th uh, this is related to career. So as a professional, uh, is it possible to make my career into a cyber security? Any aspect of any vertical of cyber security. Uh, I have uh, 30 years experience in non-IT. I am a non-IT guy, purely non-IT guy. So how can I dive into a cyber? Is there any fundamentals that I have to go through and yeah, so what this you can primarily do is yeah, primarily what you can do is you know uh, to begin with you can start with the uh, courses which are there on Coursera which give you the basics of uh, cyber security. Then you can go to the advanced level and uh, uh, a second or third level. And once you know the basics of the cyber security as to what it is and uh, how it does. Then you know probably you can get into different kind of courses of ethical hacking or CISSP or you can get into the ISO 2001. Uh, there are a number of courses uh, which can take you to three different streams. One is the cybersecurity itself. Uh, uh, the the second one is um, what do you call uh, the cyber crime. That's a uh, uh, the. Uh, yes, please. please. Unmute yourself to ask question. If you have any question, then please unmute yourself and ask. Hello. There was, there was one question. I, I, there was, I think, I'm just reading uh, what Sanjeev saying. So I think uh, you can ask your question, uh, Sanjeev. So primarily, his question is, you know, uh, it's a very interesting. Again, that uh, whenever you go to a site and uh, you see the same kind of images which you have seen on the other side, like you went on Mitra. Uh, or Facebook, and uh, the moment you are on the Google site or the Facebook, you are seeing the same kind of uh, the dresses or the clothes or anything which you wanted uh, to buy on Mantra or Facebook, on the same kind of images which you are seeing you know, while you are browsing through. This is very much possible. What they do is all these sites. Uh, when I spoke to you about you know uh, sniffing your data, you are no more a, a user of uh, internet. Uh, they fingerprinting you all together and uh, uh, once i say they are being uh, fingerprinting you that means they are following you went through and facebook on first of three uh, it it changes privacy policy so even if you are not online it will try to sniff when you are not online so it will try to work out that which bank sites did you use which applications which what you are using so this is the kind of you know I think what they are doing. So it's a fingerprinting, which they do. How to avoid it? Uh, the simple thing is, if you go to Chrome, uh, just put a ad blocker, right, and uh, or or a CC cleaner along with it, and uh, block all those advertisements, all those all those cookies which are coming up, and which are trying to monitor you 24/7 and finger trying to fingerprint you, uh, right. Yes, please. Miss Anupam. Yes, sir. Uh, please ask your question. 
uh, if there is crime then there are many systems to to detect that problem that crime but somewhere crime always goes ahead i guess besides giving awareness we should also work on our technical skills so that uh, we can come up with a better solution to this uh, i want to ask you what is uh, your view on this so the criminals are very fast right? they are thinking much more than what you are doing as at the same time uh, you know uh, uh, the 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 crime investigation also is trying to take up all those crimes which are happening right to investigate them so uh, it's a the cat and cat uh, and a mouse uh, cat and a mouse uh, situation uh, where we you know uh, run one after the other but unfortunately uh, at this point in time they are running ahead the hackers are running ahead of us and most of the law enforcement agency has been taken aback most of time i hope i answered your question ma'am i think you want me to you know, yes, clarify on this i'll that no that that's fine i got it mr vinay uh yes Uh, sir, my question is: uh, You have already told told them mm-hmm. that, uh, matlab, if someone posted something on social media, it will be there forever. So my question is: If someone is posted something on social media, is there any uh, method to remove it permanently? So primarily, there are very difficult to remove it on social media because uh, even if it is being removed, it's just hidden to you. uh it it's on the database of those servers say for example you uh, delete a particular you know post on facebook and uh, mm-hmm. you you think that you have removed that post but unfortunately what is happening is that the data is there on the facebook server same thing it goes with the snapchat uh, you know like we see that uh, you know once you have seen it it's not being showing up again but that always mm-hmm. remains on snapchat server so uh, it's very difficult to erase them right now uh, those because those servers are in in the control of the all the companies which are there uh, so that's how it happens as it's only that hiding uh, part which is happening okay sir sir i have two more question may i ask yeah please sir uh, there are many technology come with end to end encryption that's like whatsapp and hike so right. are they real that uh, only i and the front user can see those messages or data no other no one other can say again i didn't get your question sir uh, there are many just like whatsapp are matlab admiring uh, admiring that to an yeah, yeah, that's it hmm. so is this real this method is real that only me and the person in front of me can you uh, uh, see these messages no one other can yes that's right because you see what happens is there there the hash code which gets generated and that hash code is oh. getting in, and stored in the database so it's a public and the private key which is working up and uh, it's only the sender and the user mm-hmm. is you know able to see those messages it's not getting uh, decrypted in between but there is a catch to it if you are saving this messages mm-hmm. on uh, on the google drive okay then that end to end encryption okay so with methods which are there the tools which are there uh, you can find yeah. out those methods. but only if you are being uh, you know taking a backup on the google drive okay sir and my last question is sir i am uh, matlab asking about texting texting in local messages what we are doing in android phone are they safe hello Google phone uh, in uh, in the sense I didn't get why uh, of uh, safety. Uh, sir, I mean that. Uh, मतलब you said ना that if you have an internet connection in your phone and yeah. you have already mentioned in your PPT texting. Yeah. So also you are mentioning that texting is also मतलब one of one of their vulnerability. Yes, that's right. So if I have a normal messages just like Airtel and normal Jio messages, which normally called as texting. Right. are they yeah. actually they are vulnerable they are also vulnerable yeah, they oh. see it's like if uh, they are also vulnerable so uh, what i can do is if i have uh, hacked your phone mm. right and uh, i am able to uh, get all your messages 
that's number one second is whatever messages you are sending in i can do a man in the middle attack okay and uh, take away all those messages so there are different methods of you know sniffing through those messages as Yeah, Vinay. There was some dis uh, connectivity yeah. issue. So, Vinay, do you have uh, more uh, more questions? Okay, I think uh, Vinay got disconnected. Anyone uh, has any questions? So one question which I, which I found from Harshit, uh, I think uh, the programming language. Uh, one thing, uh, Harshit, you should be very clued up on working on the Kali Linux. Uh, the, as regard the language is concerned, if you know Python, Java, uh, C, C++, uh, that should be pretty good. Uh, okay, and uh, very conversant with using the Linux codes. Because if you want to be a, a big time hacker or a white hat hacker, I think uh, for that uh, purposes, you always require to know the coding. So Linux, not the Windows. Uh, so that whatever codes you're writing or you know whatever um, uh, tools which you're writing, it will help you in making those tools very effective. So work on the Kali Linux, learn that. Yes, please. Any other question? Anyone? So I think uh, we are good. So if anyone has any kind of questions, do send us mail. We will revert back accordingly. Uh, also, uh, please make sure uh, you could uh, wild list our uh, email ID to get notification for the notifications. Uh, we will share uh, the live video of this session with all of you. So, uh, thank you very much. If you like uh, this session, please uh, give your so we can come up with a similar kind of session series. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Kalindri sir, uh, for spending you, the time. Wonderful session. Uh, we are uh, continuously getting a wow, wow, wow. Uh, this is a very great and uh, lovely session. Uh, many of us are asking for uh, to repeat this session. Uh, yes, definitely, we will come to this session, a uh, series of session. Also, we will come uh, a, a new series for parents. Uh, we are also getting. Uh, uh, suggestions. So thank you, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye.